All right, back to wiring the cabin part. Oh, I don't know if you can see, but by dropping the center cabinet on the driver's side of the van, driver's side of the ambulance, uh, four screws to drop, I was actually able to access this compartment in back where I'm now I'm running some wire, some aluminum cabled wire. It's kind of a multi-strand gauge, which I'll be able to power several outlets, several different dedicated circuits from. Ah, it's getting hot in here. And uh, once I get that ran, it'll power the, the microwave, the refrigerator unit, all on dedicated circuits. So at any rate, a little more progress. Stay in touch. All right, I successfully landed the aluminum clad. This is, uh, uh, what is it? It's, I think it's 14, one, two, three. 14, three, so it'll power three circuits, plus the uh, neutral and the ground. Um, so yeah, I was, like I said, by dropping this one little cabinet here, I was able to access the chase back behind there and able to run my AC wire. Uh, you can see it, finally. There's enough space behind the cabinetry, probably about a, I don't know, three quarters of an inch or so. And now I've got my, my aluminum clad down to here. I'm gonna pull it up there to power the microwave and then run a circuit a dedicated circuit from there to run where the refrigerator is going to go. And I want to make sure and get all that in and done before I installed this window. So, at any rate, we're getting there. You let it be said, you don't know what you got until you get into it. This is where the uh, passenger compartment uh, heating and air conditioning unit was. Didn't really work very well anyway. And I was looking for a place to put our uh, uh, power supply for the ambulance RV. So what I decided to do is just go ahead and disconnect this from the box, which has now fallen to the ground down there. I didn't want to disconnect the uh, hoses and all that kind of stuff, as you can see, because I would have had to try to bypass that somehow. So with that disconnected and the, and the case off, I'll now be able to put the, the RV power box in there. A little panel off to the side for other switches and that sort of thing. So what I'm going to work on now is running the uh, main power cable. What the ambulance, the AC ambulance was wired in, the AC, the ambulance was wired in uh, AC cable that's uh, like a power cord. Let's see if I can find an example of it. Yeah, like this. It's, uh, most of it was 14.3. Uh, I went ahead and got some... Uh, 12.3 to wire some of the other outlets and things like that. And then I've got the 14.3, got about 15 foot of it I picked up at Home Depot today, that I'm going to use. It's a 30 amp uh, power box that we're going to put in here. So now I'm trying to figure out a way to run that through the ceiling and over to the driver's side to where we can do our external outlet for uh, campsites. Anyway, that's what I'm going to work on now. Keep in touch. All right, a little fishing and finagling, and I've got my 10-3 wren from where the power box is gonna be, through the ceiling, fished it uh, through this light hole, back behind the cabinet, and now, voila. So somewhere out there, I will uh, put the uh, 30 amp outlet, inlet, whatever you wanna call it. We're moving along. And finally, after much fishing, I've got my multiplex uh, aluminum clad 14 gauge wire <whistles> run through the ceiling down and it goes into a chase there, which actually goes down to the box and that's where I'm going to put the, uh, the water heater and then I'll use that as connection to connect that end to the other multiplex that will go and run the other circuits for the microwave and refrigerator. Progress. Slow. But we're getting there. Kind of an FYI, if you're ever using the aluminum clad flexible wiring, you need to use the flex connectors, which include this plastic insert to kind of keep the sharp edges from the wire, and a special connector like that. We'll get that all connected up, and you can see this has uh, enough power for four different circuits uh, one for the water heater, one for the microwave, one for, what else, the refrigerator. 
and I think I'm going to use the other one to power the outlets. Keep in touch. Okay, now out here underneath the uh, the chase in the countertop, I've got the wires connected to a junction box. This is going to be the uh, outlet that's going to power the electric water heater. It's 120 volt, I think 15 amp water heater. Small little thing, point of use. Probably won't provide a lot of hot water, but it'll at least provide warm water when, you, when you're camping. It's awesome. And a switch to turn that on and off, and then otherwise it's a junction box for all the other cables that are going to power the refrigerator, the microwave, and the outlets. Ha! Huh. An interesting experiment that worked out. Because there was a limited number of wires already chased down behind that cabinet that I could identify, I wanted to see if I could get more wires ran from the RV control panel to back there, because that's actually going to have the light panels, the, the switches that control a lot of the lights and that sort of thing. Well, one thing the van is equipped with is a bunch of oxygen tubing that runs through the ceiling. So I found a tube that ran from up here, which is kind of the main chase in the ceiling, down to that control panel. Cut off the ends to see if in fact I could use it as a chase for some 12 volt wiring. And it worked really well. I've got two wires ran through. One that's going to be the, the red is going to be the main power source. It's a 12 gauge uh, stranded wire that I'm going to use to control a lot of the lights, the fuel, not the fuel pump, but the water pump and things like that. And as you can see, despite the fact that it's a rubber hose, it was able to chase down fairly well. A little more success. And following that to the next step, you can see there's the oxygen tubing with the black and red wires run through. Now I've got them chased through the ceiling. And the problem then was how to get it fed through. I don't know if you can see, but there's insulation and all kinds of other stuff. So again, I just used a piece of the uh, oxygen tubing, was able to force that down between the insulation and above the aluminum grid, and use that as a chase to get those wires. I don't know if you can see it. They are now successfully ran through the other end of the oxygen tubing. It's pretty dark in there. But now we'll be able to reach the power box. More fun with oxygen tubing. Uh, taking that to the next logical step, I used a piece of uh, the O2 tubing. I cut a slit down it lengthwise and used it for the wire molding to go from this chase to the other chase and then just taped up the end. So now that, that wire that I just ran is safe and secure within its own molding. Gotta love just making crap up as you go. Thank you. 